Hi everyone and welcome to the Better Everyday YouTube channel. My name is Randy. So today we are watching part eight. It's a compilation of insults from and probably including two Jimmy Carr from eight out of ten cats does countdown. I've watched a couple of those compilations by now if you can't guess by the fact that this is part eight. Um, I have a lot of fun watching them and the way that a lot of them just roll with the punches despite the zingers people don't get butt hurt over things some of uh my fellow americans could probably learn a thing or two from them but anyway without further ado here we go i press play there's nothing Rachel has a master's degree in maths from Oxford University. Frankly, using her for the maths on Countdown is like using the Large Hadron Collider as a water slide. <laughs> Russell's T-shirt is so tight he looks like a toddler that was granted a magic wish to be big. <laughs> Tom says he used to dress in Victorian clothing as a teenager to disguise the fact he was gay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tom, that'll throw him off the scent. <laughs> Tom owns a number of exotic pets, including an iguana. Brightly coloured, with soft, leathery skin and a bulging neck, Jonathan is one of the most distinctive faces on television. <laughs> well, very funny, Jimmy, but the iguana's dead, and you weighs Dave as a joke, you are a terrible person. <laughs> I, I went for iguana, you went with Dave. What, how did you pronounce iguana? Well, it, it had its iguana. Okay. You did say iguana the first time. You can, right before yeah. iguana, I thought, I I thought, thought you were I, getting it right. I thought I you were dead. Does it matter? <laughs> Sarah is from the Northeast, and fun fact human beings share 99.9% .9 of our DNA with Geordies. What? I'm technically a sun dancer, so South. With Geordies? Geordies. Is that people from the Georgia. Shore? I think there's a TV show or something about a place called the Georgia Shore. I'm technically a sand dancer, so South Shields. But a also, sand dancer? Yeah, but it sounds rubbish, doesn't it? My hometown is Southport and they are the sand grounders. Just, uh, oh, not, really? Not all commoners with this information. <laughs> <laughs> My hometown is Lancaster and we call ourselves Lancastrians because we don't like to take the piss. <laughs> Where are you from and what do they call you lot? I'm from Kettering and they call us legends. <laughs> <laughs> I like and the to obnunciate is to announce bad news, as used in the sentence, the shopkeeper obnunciated, I'm sorry, Rachel, but we only have that particular dress in a child size. <laughs> Saves on VAT, you'd know all about that, Jimmy. Saves on VAT. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen provided the voice for the Postman Pat movie. I saw it and was shocked. It involved more licking, stamping and stuffing big packages into tiny slots than any film since Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> That's also the childhood, a child's icon you've just besmirched with your filth. Mm. You the voice of Postman Pat? Yeah. Did you create a backstory for him or anything? Yeah, because he was in a TV series before the film. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, yeah. who did you take over from? Who was the voice in the telly show? Well, a very unhappy man. Yeah. Clearly. <laughs> Just wondering how he feels about it all. Well, I look at it like Bond, really. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you move yeah. on, there's different Bonds, no one gets mm. upset. There's wow. different Pats. There's different Pats. <laughs> 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 That's fair. Oh, 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 Idris, same. Idris Elba's going to be the next post from Pat. <laughs> Before finding fame on the... He might be the next Bond. I heard that Idris Elba... Maybe the next James Bond. I've only seen one movie ever and I don't even remember it. Edges anyway. Elba's gonna be the next post from Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Before finding fame on The Daily Show in America, Michelle worked on Wall Street. So her surname is Wolf and she used to work on Wall Street. She's just like that film. Annie. <laughs> <laughs> in 2016, John became a father. Must have been amazing holding that child for the first time and thinking, wow, just nine months ago I was sitting at home waiting for my wife to get back from her yoga retreat. <laughs> <laughs> what a weekend. <laughs> Where would we be without Rachel Riley? Well, we could probably just move the letters board closer to Susie. It's not like she's rushed <laughs> off her feet. <laughs> Rachel appeared on a celebrity version of Child Genius where she was beaten by a 12-year-old oh, cool. in a maths challenge. And there's me thinking dancing on Strictly would have been the most embarrassing thing in your career. <laughs> <laughs> 
Johnny Vegas has show business running through his veins, as well as dangerously high levels of saturated fat. <laughs> hey. We've all come back to butter. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I was mocked during the Margarine years. I have no idea what he just said. Goodness gracious. It's, I usually am pretty good these days about understanding English accents, but I didn't gather that. Butter is delicious, though. I heard that part. Butter. You've all come back to butter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, Haven't you? Uh, I was mocked during the margarine years. <laughs> Your love of butter. I mean, you said you, you've outlived Prince and David Bowie. Who, who would have thought it? Because <laughs> well, I'm younger. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should probably crack on with the show because, judging by Rachel's dress, she clearly has a hen do to get to. <laughs> I had quite a few hen do's this year, actually. Did you? One of them, I dressed up my friend as a tortoise with a penis. That's nice. <laughs> yes, there is a spot. I'm really proud of that. What are they saying about a hen do? <laughs> she loves tortoises, so we all went. And penises. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we were in Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> no, your mum's going, yeah? No, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my mum's like, that was a good night, actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she really came out of her shell. <laughs> John recently became a father. John's got OCD, so the conception took a while, as as soon as he turned his wife on, he had to go back and make sure he turned her off again. <laughs> Rachel Wiley has a degree from Oxford, and her tutors have a degree of sadness when they think about her chosen career path. <laughs> <laughs> Joe lives in... If I was the tutor of a girl that went to Oxford and she did the letter flip on the show, there might be some, like, that's, that's, you didn't, you didn't want more? You know, especially college professors, they, they want you to go off and work some high-level you know, lots of respect kind of job, what they deem to be, you know, lots of respect kind of job. I can't believe she went to Oxford. Sadness when they think about her chosen career path. <laughs> <laughs> Joe lives in Brighton. He fits right in because if there's one thing the residents of Brighton love, it's a hairy bum. <laughs> Kind of place uh, Michelle, like do you know who any of us are? <laughs> no, I thought uh, when I saw you, I thought maybe Benedict Cumberbatch had gotten in a terrible accident. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> the really hurtful thing about that is I sort of take that as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> gingerbread man. Oh, it's a gingerbread me. Yeah, gingerbread you. I've got a gingerbread Susie. You can eat that if you want. I mean, you're more than wow. welcome. That had a wrong back. quite pretty. Look, look at that. Yes. Oh, is it edible? Yeah, of course it's edible. Uh, hang on. I always have to ask. Come on, put one for John. <laughs> <laughs> Noel's every girl's dream if what that girl is dreaming of is a 40 something goth crow. <laughs> Noel, you're pretty rock and roll, and Countdown isn't. How would you make this show kind of more. More kind of cool. Mm, don't know. You could, the desks could be on fire or something. <laughs> <laughs> Different host. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have the Riddler from Batman on it every week. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not. Yeah, you're right. It's not what, sorry? I've already tried to bite into it and I really gave it a good go and she wouldn't give. <laughs> <laughs> a baby porcupine is called a porcupet. Porcupet is also a chat up line in Newcastle. Rosheen, the inedible gingerbread man, how's that going? <laughs> She's eating it after she said she couldn't bite into it. Don't hurt your teeth. The inedible gingerbread man, how's that going? <laughs> how's, the, uh, how's that going down here? I've talked around. <laughs> how, much, uh, how much is left of that gingerbread man? She's <laughs> literally legless. <laughs> Where would James be without comedy? Well, I imagine hanging out at a games workshop wondering what it's like to touch a girl's boob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still doing half of those things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying Chris Addison has weirdly long limbs, but I'm not sure whether to laugh at him or trap him under a glass and put him outside. 
Herkel Durkel is an old Scottish term meaning to lounge in bed all day. Hey, Scottish people, you can't lie in bed all day unless, of course, you've given the Domino's delivery guy his own key. <laughs> Rachel, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Well, in 10 years, hopefully, I'll have been working in telly for 18 years. So I'll probably be testifying against someone I've worked with. <laughs> oh, no. The Brett Domino trio have an incredibly dedicated following, by which I mean they're being monitored very closely by the police. <laughs> <laughs> Should we respond or...? <laughs> Johnny, what was your five? Four. What, sorry? Phone! <laughs> Tolkien typed the 1,200-page manuscript of Lord of the Rings using only two fingers. I bet that was bloody Mordor. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, you often tweet about... Bloody Mordor. He typed it using only two fingers. I assumed it was handwritten. Ah. I have never thought about that. Oh. Um, the Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, and the Samarian. I can't, I can't, my brain's just not. I assume those were written out manuscript. You know, like this. <laughs> Catherine, you often tweet about celebrities. If you could go on holiday with any celebrity, who would it be? Oh my gosh, I'd probably go on holiday with you. Excellent choice. What, what, why me? I mean, I think you're super fun, and I know you live a lavish lifestyle, and, like, I think you need a best friend. Aww. And we out. <laughs> you know I'm a real boy. <laughs> Lee excelled at school. Sorry, Lee was expelled at school. <laughs> Hypothermia is a state in which the core temperature of the body falls below 35 degrees. People who die from it include mountaineers and, during a cold snap, viewers of regular countdown. <laughs> David has that just-got-out-of-bed look if the bed was some flattened cardboard boxes in the doorway of a Curry's Digital. <laughs> you look like Dracula's less successful younger brother. <laughs> <laughs> countdown. <laughs> right, we'll start with um, a consonant, please. Thank you, Lee. Rachel. M. Uh, vowel? V. Upside down. <laughs> <laughs> it's your only job, Rachel. <laughs> Susie has written 14 books all about the derivations of words and phrases. Susie, where do you get your lack of ideas from? <laughs> In David's most recent book, he named a squirrel after Susie Dent, small, wild and with an insatiable appetite for nuts. Susie was delighted. <laughs> The Oxford English Dictionary grows by over 4,000 words a year. No wonder Seriously? Susie Dent's worn out. Well, that and the dogging. Does it really grow by 4,000 words per year? I never thought about language evolution until 2013 or so. I had read that things like tweet were being, add to, were being added to the dictionary and a couple of other words. And I was thinking, why? And then now that I've gotten older and I'm more attentive toward words and word selection, especially if you listen to, like, politicians, reporters and stuff, if you pay attention, you see intent. Not always, but, you know, you can see intent behind word selection. And anyway, the, the meaning of words change and the... The words that are used to represent certain ideas or things also change. And what did he just say? He said 4,000 words are added to the Oxford English Dictionary every year. I did not realize that it was to that degree of, you know, evolution and language. Is that just on a higher? I don't understand how 4,000 words every... I don't think that... That can't be right. 4,000? He said 4,000, I think. Is he dense, worn out? Well, that and the dogging. 
Susie doesn't really enjoy being famous and goes to great lengths to avoid being recognised. For example, when she's in her car, she wears sunglasses and a hat, so the other doggers don't know it's her. <laughs> Susie Dent knows the derivations of even the rudest words and phrases, so where does cock gobbler come from? Well, she was born in Woking, but now she lives in Oxford. <laughs> <laughs> that's my baby, that's my baby. It's always banging that door, aren't you? <laughs> Are you talking to Susie or me now? <laughs> He's never banging on my door, I have to say, thank goodness. Um... <laughs> Susie has written 14 books about the derivations of words, and you can find them all in your local library. Just ask for the Sleepy Go Bye Bye section. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Susie, what have you been looking into recently? Other than glory holes. What's <laughs> 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 up with that thing? Unnecessary. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Susie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who's <laughs> dry? <laughs> now, what have you been looking into recently? <laughs> <laughs> all the effect of my having brought me <laughs> no, I've been looking to the uh, the language of doctors which is quite interesting okay. but things like um, brothel sprouts was, brothel sprouts yeah, you know doctors have these ridiculous names to try and the black humor sick humor to yeah. try and you know keep the horrible stuff at bay so brothel sprouts uh, basically genital, genital warts sorry I'm sorry <laughs> to make <laughs> Um, yes, that's it, really, I can't, I'm just thinking glory <laughs> holders. <laughs> Fish once went to see the film Shame with his dad, but said the graphic sex made it very awkward. Everyone in the cinema asked them to stop. Mmm, <laughs> too much. I don't even know what to say. That, I feel like everything before glory hole just was wiped from the slate. One of these days I will actually watch this show. I won't be doing them as reactions just because I don't have time to watch. Because this show is a, a lot longer than a 12-minute clip, so I wouldn't be able to post them as reactions. But it's so much fun to watch. Like, I enjoy watching stand-up comedy, for example, but it's a lot different than different people interacting and kind of throwing insults at one another that just adds a layer of life to it and makes it a little bit more fun and entertaining so to speak um anyway let me know what you thought of the compilation thank you very much for tuning in and i'll see you next time have a good one